Hello, everyone. I was hoping to have you be able to experience my lesson as a student, but that was an epic fail because it required, no matter how much I tried to um, circumvent that issue, uh, it still required you to log in through Google. So I'm going to pretend to be you and I'm going to navigate the lesson and show you what the student experience would be like. Hello, everyone. Today's topic is ethics. And the question I would like for you to think about um, on this topic is, as a junior high student, what do ethics have to do with me? Let's take some time to go over the objectives which will also be our success criteria. The first is, I will be able to identify my own beliefs about what is doing good and what is doing harm. The second, I will be able to define the word ethics in my own words and how it might apply to our classroom. The third, I will be able to explain with details and examples what it means to be each of the following, trustworthy, respectful, responsible, hurtless, and someone who makes things better. Write a brief summary of your success criteria. What should you be able to do at the end of this lesson? Before we go into defining what ethics are, I think it would be a lot easier to first start with looking at what ethics are not. Ethics are not the same as feelings because just like some people can feel bad about doing something bad, others can feel good about doing something bad. Ethics are not the same as religion because some religious people can do bad things. Ethics are not the same as following the law, because not all laws are good. Some can be corrupt. Ethics are not the same as obeying the rules and following the traditions of your culture. Some cultures do things that are not good for people. Ethics is not a science, because science cannot tell us how to behave. So after reading what ethics are not, which one surprised you the most, and why? So then, what are ethics? Well, let's move on to the next slide to find out. While there are many different ways to define ethics, the one we will be using for our lesson is that ethics are standards that guide our behavior with one another and our decision making. Now, in your answer text box, please write the definition of ethics as the one that we will be using in our lesson.
How would standards that guide our behaviors with one another benefit our class? How would having standards guide our decision making in class? Before we continue into the lesson, let's look at lenses. If we have on a pair of glasses in which the lenses are tinted pink, everything is going to look a bit pinkish. If we are using glasses in which the lenses are tinted blue, then things are going to look a bit bluish. The same goes with which lens we use to define ethics. If we use the rights lens or the justice lens or the virtue lens or the utilitarian lens or the care ethic lens or the common good lens, ethics might look slightly different. So what I would like for you to do is to click on the link, the many ethical lenses and read the document that gives a brief description of each lens and how each one interprets ethics. Then when you come back, what I would like for you to do is to answer the following questions. Which one do you feel you relate to the most when it comes to the standards you create for yourself? Give an example to better understand your answer. Which one do you feel you relate to the least when it comes to the standards you create for yourself? Give an example to better understand your answer. So after you look at the different uh, lenses, I would like for you to choose one that you relate to the most and say, yes, this is the one that I feel I live up to as far as my own personal ethics. And find one in which you feel you relate to the least and say, I don't really look at my ethical um view in the same way. And then answer in your answer text box. After reviewing the different ways that ethics can be interpreted through the various lenses, I would like for you to match what profession might view the ethics through that particular lens. The professions I have here from which you would choose are judges, business owners, doctors, lawyers, teachers, people in general. So now I would like for you to match the profession with the ethic lens that you think they use to make decisions. There's no right or wrong answer, only a well or poorly supported one. Type your answers in the orange boxes. Be prepared to justify your answers using the document attached to this slide. So now that you've matched the professions to the different lenses, I want you to choose one of your answers, the lens and the profession that you put together and explain why you think that profession would use the ethical lens that you chose. Again, 
There's no right or wrong answer, only well-supported ones or poorly supported ones. Please justify your answer in your answer text box. At this point, I bet you're wondering, why are we doing this? Why are we looking at ethics? Why are we looking at lenses through which we interpret these ethics? Well, here's the reason. In order for all of us to understand how we're to behave in the classroom, how we're supposed to treat each other, and how we make decisions in our classrooms, we have to have a set of ethics for our class. That way we are all on the same page and we understand how we're supposed to make our decisions because we have agreed upon a set of ethics that we will follow. One of the lenses that I chose to create our class code of ethics is the virtue lens. When people use the virtue lens to interpret their ethical standards, they will ask themselves, what kind of person will I become if I do this? Or is this action consistent with my acting at my best? Some virtue ethics are honesty, compassion, love, and fairness, but there are so many more. What I would like for you to do now is to do a search for ethical virtues. And from those, list at least five virtues that are important to you. List those in your answer text box. Now let's, let's do, do some, some thinking. thinking. From, From the five virtues you chose, choose one and give an example of a situation in which you would use that virtue to make a decision. Think of something that could happen that you would wonder, how would I, how would I go about making this decision? And use the virtue that you chose to make that decision. What would that look like? Use your answer text box to place your answer. The second lens I chose to make our class code of ethics, the care ethic lens. The ethics of care emphasizes the importance of responsibility, concern, and relationships. It is about demonstrating empathy between someone giving the care and someone needing the care. I would like for you to give an example of how a student can show concern and an empathy to another student during class. Again, Answer in the text box. Let's do some more thinking. What relationships are you a part of? Let's do some brainstorming. There's so many different relationships you are a part of. For example, classmates, friends, family, teachers, parents, admin, campus security. Think of the ones that you are a part of. So now we've come to the class code of ethics that I have chosen for our class. I have chosen to be trustworthy, to be respectful, to be responsible, to be hurtless, and to be someone who makes things better. Now let's look at what it looks like when you are doing the following. What does it look like when you are being trustworthy? Well, you are doing what you're supposed to be doing when you are supposed to be doing it, where you are supposed to be doing it, and with whom you are supposed to be doing it. To be respectful, you are telling the truth, you are keeping your promises, and you do not listen to or spread rumors. When you are being responsible, you complete the work you have been assigned to do, you honor your commitments, and you are dependable. You accept the consequences for what you do. When you are being hurtless, you are mindful of your words, your actions, so that they do not harm people. When you are someone who makes things better, you help each other be trustworthy, respectful, and responsible. If you see someone in need, 
you help them and you make each other feel welcome and you're kind. So here we have it. These are our class code of ethics. You are to be trustworthy, be respectful, be responsible, be hurtless, and be someone who makes things better. Now these class codes can be applied in other places other than their classroom. So choose one of the following and give an example of how these ethics could be used in that setting. The choices are clubs, sports, field trips, friends, volunteering at a shelter, family, taking care of pets, and babysitting. Be sure to justify your answer. Again, remember, there are no right or wrong answers, just well-supported ones or poorly-supported ones. So here's where you're going to add one more. From all that you have learned and searched on your own in this lesson, what ethic would you add? Think of one more and explain the following. What would it look like if you were following that ethic, the one that you chose? Why would you add it to the class code of ethics? Again, remember, there's no right or wrong answer or only well-supported ones and poorly supported ones. So now we've reached the end of this lesson, and we should review the success criteria. Remember, the success criteria is so that you know if you are able to do what this lesson was intended for you to be able to do. So drag your check mark to the ones that you feel you are ready to do. Can you identify your own beliefs about what is doing good and what is doing harm? Are you able to define the word ethics in your own words and how it might apply to our classroom? Can you explain with details and examples what it means to be the following? Trustworthy, respectful, responsible, hurtless, and someone who makes things better. And if you cannot say that you can do this, then go back over the slides on the ones that you're a little doubtful on and review. And then come back and see if you can move the check mark to say that you have achieved that success criteria.